Hello, gentles and lady men. I'm Ulan Gaming, and today we have a new uh, civilization overview today. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but today we're covering Malta, one of my favorite civilizations in the game, tied with USA and Aztec. Maybe, maybe even ahead of them, actually. I, I really like Malta. But uh, today we are going to get into it. We have their super high quality high res flag that I made in fucking like Microsoft Paint, and now we move move on to their your their unique mechanics, of which they have a few. The first of which is that Malta, as a civilization bonus, gets plus two percent HP on all of their units with every shipment. Now I should clarify this does not include things like mercenaries or native warriors. It only specifically refers to Maltese units, which includes anything that you can train out of the barracks or the artillery foundry. So that includes uh, all of their skirmishers like crossbows and fire throwers, all of their heavy infantry like pikemen, hospitallers, and sentinels, and it includes all of their artillery like falconets, culverns, stuff like that. It also includes their explorer and their settlers and the fixed gun building as well. Uh, another unique, the, the next unique mechanic is teleportation. Oh, so we'll, we'll go, we'll go over that, that next. Uh, is their tongues. So Malta have a unique set of shipments called tongues that allow you to get other units from other civilizations that are considered unique to them and train them for yourself. This includes things like German settler wagons, it includes things like British longbows, cassadors, lancers, cuirassiers, and obris, like Russian oprinchniks. Uh, you can only train them out of the Malta stable equivalent, which is called the commandery, which is kind of like a stable blockhouse instead of a... Uh, it's kind of like a stable blockhouse instead of a barracks blockhouse that blockhouses normally are. Uh, the stable blockhouse can also teleport units from one stable block. Uh, the commanderies uh, can teleport units from one commandery to another, which is where that teleportation ability comes in. Now, this ability has a very long cooldown and is not the fastest thing in the world. It takes three seconds for each unit to get into the commandery, and then it takes another five seconds before they're able to deploy from the other one, and oftentimes you'll find that it's just as good to just walk over there, so... Uh, even though the teleportation ability is nice and can be useful, you will find yourself not using it more often than, more often than not. Uh, so, in, ex in addition to having a special uh, stable, which is kind of like a blockhouse that teleports, they also have uh, special barrackses, which have a putridly tiny amount of HP, but they also heal units around them and only cost half the wood, so it's, it's, it's a huge upgrade in my opinion. Uh, their last unique mechanic is Wignacourt. Now, Wignacourt is not actually a unique Malta mechanic, but a unique Malta card. But it's so central to Malta's playstyle that I decided to put it in the unique mechanics anyway. So the Wignacourt card uh, boosts natural gathering resources by 10%, but it instead boosts it by 30% instead of 10% when your settlers are gathering near town centers, outposts, or commanderies. Uh, and the, uh, the the distance that they can cover is quite large, so it increase it, it gives you this uh, expansion mentality where you want that 30% boost, and you're gonna send Wingnacord in just about every game you play. So every time you go to a new resource pile, boom, you drop an outpost, boom, you drop a commandery. You know you're gonna have map control up the ass essentially, especially once they get a card later that allows them to train infantry out of their outposts. You just Explode, and you can defend pretty much everywhere in the game. Uh, now their general playstyle is pretty much anything except a naked fast fortress. Uh, I've been trying to get a naked fast fortress to work, so you know, don't quote me on that. But in general, it does feel like Malta has very little reason to actually stay in to actually rush to age three. Uh, they have very important cards like Wignacourt that they just need to get in age two and their only fast age up option is through a card that you have to spend instead of you know Wignacourt. Uh, so there's generally this consensus that if you're fighting Malta they're gonna be in age two for a little bit 
Uh, and they are, unfortunately, rather weak to a fast fortress, because even if they do go to the fortress age, you know, they don't have many units that shadow tech, except out of the commandery, which is a little expensive. Um, the, and they also don't have a, uh, two falconet shipments or any kind of Colburn shipments, so... Uh, they only have the uh, the fixed gun shipment, which can kind of make them fit as sitting ducks. Now, the fixed gun is very good, but if the enemy is clever and can play around it, then it's not much use. Uh, so so that kind of creates the uh, the conundrum of, in order to fast fortress, you can to counter fast fortress, you, you know, often just fast fortress yourself and shit two falconets yourself, but it's not really an option for Malta, uh, because they just are not built to play into the Fast Fortress playstyle. Now, for their Egypt system in here, they have standard basic bitch politicians that all the European civs have, but their, exp their hero, the Grand Master, ain't no basic bitch, let me tell you this. There is a reason that I put the Grand Master as tied with all of the native war sheets for best explorer in the game in my explorer tier list, by the way. You should go check out my explorer tier list. Uh... The Malta Explorer has the increased HP that, like, the USA Generals do, and he maintains the kind of pistol range attack that they have. Uh, and just like the, um, ju just like the USA Explorers, the, the, Mex the USA and Mexico Explorers, he can also build forts. But unlike the Generals for USA and Mexico, who can build forts and place a flag and nothing else, the Grand Master can build forts and also build town centers instead of just instead of building town centers. They can also build outposts, also build fixed guns, and can build uh, depots, of which the Explorer is actually your only way to build depots and fixed guns. So he is actually extremely important to keep alive, and he'll probably be building most of the game and just littering the map with depots. If you are not littering, if you're a multiplayer who isn't just littering the map with depots all over the place, you're not you're not doing multi. You're not doing them justice. Uh, so yeah, the, the the Grand Master is just fantastic. You're gonna place little explosions all around the map. It's it's wonderful. Now, for unique units, let me talk about the depots on the far right first. Uh, the depots I've mentioned quite a few times. It's a stationary building uh, that has low HP and explodes either when you tell it to or when it gets destroyed, and you can't destroy it without exploding. Uh, the depot is yeah, very good. It also boosts the attack speed of gunpowder units nearby, or oh, friendly gunpowder units nearby. Uh, you do have to be careful, though, because the explosions can hurt you and your allies, not just your enemies. So you do want to stay away from it when it blows up. But the depots are very, very, very good. Um, you just litter them all over the place, and your opponent either has to respect the depots because they don't want their whole army to be half HP for a little bit, or they have to, and they have to, like, they, your enemy has to respect the depots, and if they don't, you know, they're using, they're losing a ton of HP on their army, and when they do respect the depots, then they have to take the time to safely siege them, and you can get away with just kind of letting them siege away, and buying yourself minutes upon minutes upon minutes of time that the enemy is, is taking to get around you. It's a, a very, very valuable tool, uh, the depots. Uh, others include the fixed gun. Now, the fixed gun is uh, just to the left and up one from the depot, which is on the far right. Uh, now, the fixed gun is both a building and an artillery piece, and it has the tags for both of them, uh, which means it's very, very weak to Colburns. Very weak to Colburns. Um, the fixed gun is a big boy cannon. It's kind of like a heavy cannon, but available in age 3. Uh, with the ex with the uh, with, with several thousand HP, with the caveat that it can't move and it, can't, it has a, a minimum range, so it cannot fire units that are right underneath it. Uh, it also has range that matches Culverns, and it does have a negative multiplier against artillery, though, much like a heavy cannon. Uh, there are other unique units include the. Uh, Sentinel, which is basically a Doppelsoldner that has less area of effect and more HP. Uh, the Doppelsoldner is extremely tanky, even compared to other 
Um, even compared to Dobson Samurai, it is like the tankiest of the three. And it is also the fastest at base level, having five movement speed as long as it's near a building. Friendly or foe, depending on whether or not you have uh, a bull. Uh, the, the, the Hospitaller is a very cool unit, a very, a very good unit. It also has the Deflection Aura, allowing it to absorb some of the damage taken from allies. So you can stick the uh, Hospitallers behind a mass of, say, Fire Throwers and give that entire mass of fire throwers 25% damage resistance for a little bit. Uh, the Sentinel is an expensive, it is, it's, sorry, it's, it's a pop expensive but resource cheap musketeer that has a, uh, that gets a stat boost for being near buildings equal to 15%. Um, and it also has the ability to make uh, outposts. Now it has the base stats of a normal musketeer, but it costs two population and 100 resources. However, it is ridiculously upgradable between uh, its 15% aura boost that scales with all of your other upgrades, the 2% with every shipment, and just a myriad of cards that affect the Sentinel to a point where it's kind of like a Strelit, but in the Musketeer class, in that it has very good stats, very good stats for how little it costs, uh, but it's shitty for a 2-pop unit. Uh, just like the Strelit has very, very good stats for how for the resource cost, but it's got shitty stats even for a one-pop unit. Uh, it's the same thing with the Sentinel. The Sentinel is the Strelit of Soldados, is one of my favorite sayings. Uh, and then their last unique unit is the Fire Thrower. Now you'll notice that the Fire Thrower, Crossbow, and uh, Colburn are all put in red. And obviously the Crossbow and Colburn are not unique to Malta, but... I want to put them here anyways because they are just that good. Uh, the Fire Thrower is kind of like a Grenadier with Skirmisher tags and multipliers instead of heavy infantry ones. Uh, and it is just a monster of... Uh, uh, it is just a monster. You can get like five Sentinels and they can easily take out like 15 Musketeers without any issues at all. Uh, fire Throwers are just insanely good. The, mo the the biggest problem with Fire Throwers is that they are tied to the Artillery Foundry, and so you can't really train them uh, with Heavy Infantry until you get Deredden Towers and can train them out of your outposts. Uh, which makes them more ideal for H3 instead of H2. Uh, even though they are available in H2, it's best that you wait till H3 before you start making uh, Fire Throwers. Uh, crossbows, on the other hand, are useful for Malta in every single age, and they are not as good as fire throwers. And a mass of fire throwers will beat an equal pot mass of crossbows, probably only barely, but they will, uh, especially once fire throwers get the multiplier against all infantry instead of just heavy. Uh, the crossbows, however, uh, all, all for Malta have the very heavy exception. Uh, I think they're basically a Maltese unique unit, essentially, because the Malta crossbow is, like, unique among all other crossbows in that they aren't fucking ass. And in fact, the crossbow is insane for Malta. It has a, a super cheap cost, uh, and it has just a bunch of HP between three combat cards, plus the 2% with every shipment, and just... All the things. There's the multi crossbow has so many stat boosters that you can give it that it just makes it a little ridiculous. It also has a royal guard and imperial upgrades, so it really turns this unit that's kind of designed for most civs to be only an age two unit plus maybe early age three into a unit that is useful in every single age at every single point in the game. Uh, the fire thrower will uh, the, the fire throwers will outperform them. They are also more expensive, costing wood coin. Uh, so there, there's this kind of back and forth. I personally use both of these units, and I love both of them. They are both just fantastic. Uh, there is definitely something to be said though that the crossbow is easier to spec into because you can just go food wood for crossbow and then food wood for pikes. Uh, and then the Colburn. Uh, Malta have a Royal Guard Culvern called the Basilisk. Now, the Basilisk gets only plus 10 extra attack. It doesn't get the plus 10 extra HP that the other Royal Guard upgrades come with. But that's perfectly fine, because it also gets plus 2% HP with every single shipment. And when you have 200 base HP, that's plus 4 HP per shipment. So that makes the, uh, the Maltese, uh, Culvern 
the heav highest damage and tankiest of any uh, of any Colburn in the entire game without upgrade cards. So there you go. It is just the best Colburn. Malta is the king of Colburns. Uh, now for primary unit compositions, uh, between all the tongues and all the the, uh, the crazy good units that you have just across the board, Malta can kind of just do anything it damn well pleases. You can go across with Pike. You can go fire throw or goon. You can go sentinel cannon. You you can even make lancers, cuirassiers, and opries, and just have a, a fucking like heavy cavalry sh smorgasbord of units that everybody hates except for you. Uh, things to watch out for are the tongues. You know you gotta watch out for the longbows, the lancers, the cuirassiers, the cassadors, and of course most importantly the opries. Now the cuirassiers and the opries are not available until age four. But there is definitely a some, some a, a little panic, a little something in the back of your head that you need to keep in mind. When Malta hits age four, you want to check their deck. You want to see whether or not they have Opries in your deck because any moment you could see uh, you you can see a, a, a commandery wagon building a commandery on the horizon. That means there's thirteen Opries just hanging around waiting for the right opportunity to kill your entire damn ego and burn their factories. So that, that is the number one thing to watch out for, is definitely just the Opry pop in age 4. And then be careful of depots, you know. Uh, don't siege them down with, with like, units up close. Just stay away from them. Depots are dangerous. Depots are dangerous. Depots are dangerous. Can I get that across any clear? Okay, thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day, and goodbye.